What's up, world? Pastor Jerome here, and you are tuned in to another episode of The Urban Perspective. Do me a favor, hit that like, that share, that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that notification button so you can be updated on new content from The Urban Perspective. Well, we're going to continue our journey through the book of Jude, and today we're going to talk about two aspects in today's clip. Number one, how can we judge sound doctrine? We're in a time where biblical illiteracy within Christendom is running rampant. People don't know true doctrine from false doctrine, true teachers from false teachers, the gifts of the spirit from the gifts of the flesh, and how to confront false doctrine and stand on biblical orthodoxy and to do as the scripture says, to rightly divide the word of God. So I'm gonna give you some tools on how we can judge sound doctrine properly. And then we're gonna look at four steps to apostasy which essentially means to fall away from the faith, or the new buzz term is called deconstruction. So how that happens and what happens that leads people to falling away from the faith. So in today's clip, we're gonna tackle those two things. Be sure to meet me in the comments and we can discuss this more as we continue to get equipped and built up because that's the central theme of what Jude says. So I'm excited about today's clip. Check it out. Make sure you make your comments in the comments section and we can talk more on the Urban Perspective. Let's go. wants us to understand how urgent this is. I want to put a graphic up I created because I, I want you to get a picture of this so that we, we, we can understand how because Christians, we're famous for telling people what but not how. I'll share this, but here's how you judge sound action. Number one is what does it say? What does the text say versus what they're saying? That's number one. Examine. Examine the text, but then examine the fruit of the speaker. Does this pastor who sounds good been accused several times of cheating on his wife? But he still gets asked to every revival. So his morality doesn't matter, but he's trying to tell people to be pure. What is the fruit of the speaker? So examine the Bible, but then examine what they're saying. Look at their fruit. You shall know a tree by its fruit. Is there, is there fruit fruitful or fruitless? So you examine, then you explain, what does it mean? What, what, what does it mean? I literally heard a pastor say, because it says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel that he convinced his church to buy him some gators. Some very expensive shoes for those who didn't catch that. How beautiful are the feet? So y'all need to bless my feet. And people bought that mess. It, ex, it, examine, then explain. Learn the content and context of the verse. Your filter is the Bible, not them. Amen? Amen. Then explore. How does it apply? How this applied back then and how it applies now. So I examine, I explain, then I begin to explore. Okay, what, what was happening here? Because sometimes we're importing stuff that doesn't actually fit. Certain things was called directly to Jerusalem or Israel, I'm sorry, but doesn't apply to us now. That's why a lot of the prosperity preachers use the Old Testament. Because they know most of you won't go behind them. Then number four, because here's, here's where do you really love that song? There's a lion inside of me. Okay, you mean that? Yeah. Are you willing to expose? Pastor Gay, what do you mean? Sometimes we got to name names. Oh, y'all mad at me now. Y'all mad at me now. You say that name, Pastor Gay, and I back you up. <laughs> I'll post your video. How about that? Are you with me? Examine, explain, explore, expose. What does the text confront? And does this text actually confront what they're saying and doesn't add up to what they're saying? Are you with me? But also... This is how we judge sound doctrine. Now, how do we contend for the faith? Remember, contending isn't separate from caring. Again, I'm going to go through this fast for the sake of time. One of the ways we contend for the faith is we care for the wounded. Verse 22, our church has been uniquely positioned where over 50% of you come here with severe church hurt, which is why it takes you out so long to join. 
I'm just going to talk to you straight because you don't trust us, and I get it. And you don't trust Christians. And so you like, I'm with you, Pastor. <laughs> I'm getting there. You, 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 you slow walk. But what he says is we got to care because some of the wounds that people come with is not from an atheist. It's from their pastor. So we contend by caring. Please don't think that all we're doing is just arguing wit. We contend by caring. Are you with me? That's verse 22. We show compassion for people who are struggling. Listen, vision is a place where it's okay for you to say, I'm wrestling with what I believe. Now, again, we're going to give you this word. You're going to get this word, this word. We're going to give you the word. But it's like, hey, man, I'm I'm, I'm wrestling. We've had people, man. I'm, 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 I feel like I'm, it's just so much going on. I'm suffering so much. I feel like God is against me. I feel like he's not answering me. He gets my hope up. I feel like he's teasing me. Guess what? People in the Bible felt that way too. Have you read the Psalms? Habakkuk said, I'm sorry, Ruth said, the hand of the Lord is against me. That's what she said. Ruth is in the book of Ruth. Naomi is the one who said it. The hand of the Lord is against me. So, Compassion for people who are struggling. That's the second way we contend. Then we contend against false teachers. I call this out not for the sake of calling it out because of what it does. We complete the mission, verses 5 through 7. He gives three Old Testament examples of how Israel did not finish. We want to make sure we finish well. We contend by communing with believers. That's verse 20. Family, you're not going to get away from us. Not biblically. Now, you can do what you want. You're grown. This isn't a cult. But, but, but trust and believe. You cannot say, Jesus, I love you, but I can't stand your bride. His bride is the church. That don't work in my house. That don't work for any husband worth his salt. You cannot say, I'm cool with you, but I can't stand your wife. But we think we can say that to Jesus. I, man, I love you, but I can't stand your wife. Jesus, save me. <laughs> Give me all the fruit of the Spirit, but tell your bride to stay home. That's what you're saying spiritually. You cannot get away from us. I know we jacked up. You are too. Looking down on us like you got it all together. We got to chase after those who are wandering. That's another way we contend for the faith. Listen to me. This takes spiritual discernment. Right now, I was telling the elders, we had our retreat. I said, there, there are some brothers I've been calling who are stiff-arming me. And there's a part of, the man part of me is like, man, all right, it's on you. Then you don't want it. But God reminds me of mercy. I'm, I'm a work in progress too, all right? Oh, you don't want to hit me back, bro? You know what I'm saying? But, but God has me chasing some people who won't, call, won't even re- return my calls. And I'm like, all right, God, as long as you, listen, this takes discernment. There is a time where you do move on. But don't, but, but, but be willing to be rejected for the gospel. Be willing for them not to call you back, not to text you, or to set a meeting and not show up. Oh, last one. Condemnation. We have to announce that there is condemnation for unbelievers. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ, Romans 8.1. But if you're not in Christ, you are condemned. And I love you enough to say this. Then he says, notice he uses the definite article, the, definite article, the faith. Contend for the faith. Not a faith. The faith. So what is he saying? When he says once and for all, he's saying that there is one faith. This is what what Paul writes. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. What is he saying? This is the only way. I know that's unpopular in our culture because we, we love that there's many ways to God. There's many. And he said, no, this is the faith. And this is God's wisdom that is youth day. He says that was handed down. Family. I need you to get this, family. 
our middle school and teens are being, they have access to videos telling them that they need to pick Yoruba over Jesus. That you need to use your sage and pray to the ancestors. You don't need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Or that you can have both. That you can have Jesus and. And this is why we do apologetics. This is why we want to build you up. And people want to spend more time knowing about the gifts than they do defending their faith. And he said, I'm not even going to talk about being saved. You need to understand how urgent this is because the faith is at stake in the lives of people who are hearing this mess. So he wants us to get this. He wants us to understand. Verse 4, for some people who were designated for this judgment long ago have come in by stealth. They are ungodly, turning the grace of our God into sensuality and denying Jesus Christ, our only master and Lord. Our next point, false teachers attempt to use God's grace against him. They won't say it. Remember, we want to get, he said they come in by stealth. I want you to think about a stealth bomber. By the time you know it's there, it's too late. The goal of the stealth is not to be seen or heard. So what he's, what he's talking about here is apostasy. Now, what is an apostate? Apostasy comes from the Greek word apostasia, and it means rebelliousness of an established system or authority, a rebellion or an abandonment or a breach of the faith. Apostate is a word used to describe those who have fallen away. This is what he's talking about. He's saying they've fallen away, but they're in trying to recruit others to fall away with them. They have fallen away, and they want you to fall away with them. And you got to remember, it's, it's not like the Jordan symbol. It's subtle. It's subtle by stealth. So I just, I just feel like why would God only need one way to him if he's God? And just put that question out in the atmosphere. Let's meet and talk about that. But their goal is to recruit you to their view, not a biblical view. It's subtle. It's not, they're not going to, hey, y'all, I'm a false teacher. No, it's not, no, no. They come in by stealth. It's just, it's, just, it's just a little thing to sow discord. Ladies, why can't God be a woman? The Bible's oppressive to women. Paul didn't like, it's just, let me just throw that out there to get you to miss the fact that women were the first ones to show up at Jesus' resurrection. But, but let me have you thinking that Paul is against Jesus because he says wives should submit. But you missed the part where Jesus submitted to go on the cross. It's just subtle to get you to look at one verse and ignore the others. And before you know it, the Bible is all patriarchal and men are misogynistic and they hate us. And so the church is not a safe place for women. Oh, sooky, sooky, sooky. See, here's the point, y'all. 1 Timothy 1, 18 through 20. L look at what Paul, this is Paul now. This is what he writes to his son in the faith. He says this, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies previously made about you so that by recalling them, you may fight the good fight. So what is he saying? I want you to know the word... Now, for his word, it would have been the Pentateuch, Old Testament, so that you can fight now. Not your personal revelation. You got to know the word so that you can fight. Verse 19 in 1 Timothy 1. Having faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and have done what? Shipwrecked their faith. That's the goal of the false teacher. Verse 20. Among them, uh-oh, Hymenaeus and Alexander. Did he just call some names? <laughs> Pastor Gay, you need to pull them aside. 
Did they pull me aside before they made that video? Or before they said that before thousands of people? Didn't Paul just name some people who have shipwrecked the faith? Let's keep going. Whom I have delivered to Satan so that they may be taught not to blaspheme. Now, see, I need y'all to get this. This is how much Paul believes in the authority of God. He's saying maybe Satan will beat them up enough that they actually run back from their blasphemy. Because you got to realize Satan wants to use you too. You, you do realize that he wants you to be a vessel. He wants you to be a vessel of destruction, a vessel of disunity. So we must not miss the severity of this. So he says that these false teachers were designated for this judgment. Now let me say this. Got to get a little deep here. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Because Christians should be thinkers. I, I don't believe this is a doctrine called superlapsarianism or double predestination where God has created some people for hell. Now, that's how some people interpret this verse. They believe that because it says they were designated for this judgment, that that God created these people to go to hell. I don't embrace that. Okay? We we don't embrace that part of Calvinism. We don't. Okay? So there are three options. I don't know which one. Something you probably rarely hear pastors say. I don't know. I'm going to present them to you. Number one, Jude could be referring to the book of Enoch. Pastor Gay, you mentioned a book that's not in the Bible. Why? Because he does in verse 14. Read your Bible. The ESV will say the book of Enoch. We're going to get there. We're going to talk about we ain't afraid of the smoke. We will break down apocryphal books versus the 66. You will learn if you show up to get built up. Amen? So, so... He could be referring to the book of Enoch. And just, just, just so you can get this, just because he mentions a book that's not in the Bible doesn't mean he's affirming it. That proves the historicity of our book. That's what he is. So he could be referring to the book of number two. The, the, the second thing that could be happening here is he may be referring to the predictions of the apostles when he says that they were designated for this judgment, talking about the false teachers. The third option is it could refer to just Old Testament prophecy. But this is what Adrian Rogers writes about these false teachers in this book, Snakes in the Garden. He says, these are persons who received the truth, rejected the truth, ridiculed the truth, and eventually will attempt to replace the truth. Don't we see this happening? I'm talking, don't we see this happening? It's a big old counseling session. Don't we see this happening? People are replacing the truth. I, 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 I used to believe that Jesus was the only way, but then I watched a YouTube clip. And a YouTube clip got you to walk away from Jesus. A YouTube clip. But guess what? Here is judgment coming to us. We're partly to blame when we don't equip. We're partly to blame when we don't equip. One more image I created for y'all. Man, I got into my some graphic design. That's how much I love y'all. Four steps One more. to apostasy. And yes, that's the shape of a tomb. All right? The first one is ignorance. Not knowing what you believe and why you believe it. Ignorance is a choice in the faith. Why don't you know? I'm not saying you know. I don't know everything. But we got to know some things. Don't know everything. But we got to know something. Put it back on the side for them, y'all. Put it back on the side. People trying to take. So, So ignorance. Ignorance is the first one. Not knowing what we believe. And then there's a reference. But then here's the second one. Listen. So you're ignorant, but then you isolate yourself from the body of Christ. And so now, and and you're not completely isolated, you begin to get around people that are affirming false doctrine. And so now you're in this group of people, you've isolated yourself from the people of God because you don't want us to challenge you. Because you already got this in your head that you've been enlightened, you woke now. I'm woke, and, 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 they, and then the church wants to keep me asleep, so I need to get away from them because they're harmful, 
and the church is bad for women, and the church is bad for LGBTQ people because it won't affirm their lifestyle, and because, because the church is, so let me isolate myself, let me be ignorant of what the text says, let me isolate myself, then number three, you become intrigued. The Bible says don't get the devil a foothold. We always think about lust and, and fornication, and we always go there. But, but, but you do know the devil uses your curiosity. I'm intrigued about this. I, n- I never thought of it that way. I never, I never thought of it that way. I, n- I never thought of God being love. And if he's love, how could he send people to hell? That would mean that he's not really loving. So teach me more. Intrigue, ignorance, isolation, intrigue, number four, indulgence. You begin to get in it. Now, it's interesting how hard people study false doctrine, but they didn't have that same intensity when they were at the church. Where they do that at? It's interesting how you, you read it, you, you, got, you ain't never mentioned a citation. But you ain't do that when you were here. Because, you know, the enemy always gets you to think. Remember, God knows that if you do this, the enemy always wants you to think that God is keeping something from you. So it sounds intriguing that you're going to have revelation beyond the Bible. Ooh, Lord Jesus. This is what he's saying here. So here it is. He says later in this text, he says these false teachers have taken the way of Cain. They plunge into Balaam's error. When he says they've taken the way of Cain, he's talking about self-righteousness. When he says they plunged into Balaam's error, he's talking about greed. When he says they've given into the rebellion of Korah, here, this is a big one. They refuse to submit to authority. And listen, we don't roll with this whole you know, some of those prosperity pastors where they act like you don't have a relationship with God outside of them. We don't roll like that here. But the pastor is a God-given authority in your life. We should not abuse it. The Bible tells us not to lord it over them. The Bible tells me I have to answer and the elders have to answer to God for your souls. But it says that you should make it a joy for you to be pastored. That's in the same verse. Same verse. Don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah, pastor, that's yours. Yeah, you got a responsibility too. Is it a joy for us to pass to you, or are you always giving spiritual authority a hard time? He's saying you went the way of Korah. And then that gets you on one of those tombs on your way to apostasy. This is why Jesus calls false teachers wolves in Matthew 7. Sheep masquerading as wolves. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's Matthew 7, 15 through 20. And that's why I said they come in by stealth. They sneak in. Listen, there's two types of false teaching. There's overt, which I actually appreciate. I'm not celebrating, but I appreciate the pastor who says, I'm an ex-pastor. I no longer believe because I know where you're coming from. I always, I, I appreciate it. If it's anything, and these are not good things. If it's racism, I prefer overt racism. I know you don't like me. I always, I'm not applauding it, but I know where you're coming from. Okay, you don't like me. Thank you. But then there's covert. Covert heresy doesn't announce itself. It just sprinkles in a half truth with a little Bible is a whole lie. And that's that's how they get us. That's how they get you. 